again. As we continue to take questions, we're going to try to wing here and do our best. So here's a question for us. Here's a question for you. La, 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 la. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. How can we put in practice the common good in a world that's so selfish with values that sometimes are so empty? I would look at our mindset <laughs> to answer this question. The way I would look at it is this question is a half empty kind of glass. I would say we should not worry about how the rest of the world behaves. What we want to concern ourselves with is how do we behave? How do we see the rest of the world? I would actually say this world is the best kind of world, a selfish world, that is, for us to practice our <coughs> common good. It is exactly the field of moral battle, so to say, we want to be in to exercise our own moral skills. It is exactly the opportunity that we need to develop and flex our moral muscles. It's the world we need because we don't have these muscles just yet. Therefore, how great that we are in such a world. And that is, I think, a fundamental mental shift we must undertake that Jesus has been calling out to us through the ages. Shift, he whispers. Shift the way we look at it. Because it is exactly what we need. A place, a location, a time to put in practice that which we need to do and we know we need to do. But we're still sometimes shuffling out to somebody else. We all want change, but not all of us want to change. So the trick is, how do we get change and change at the same time? So don't see this as a, a desert of morality. Don't see this as a horrible place. This is a beautiful place if you have eyes to see. And then hopefully that will transform our posture to the world that needs you, that needs me, that needs all of us to go out there and do the best we possibly can. So another question in Portuguese, I'll translate. Um, this person is curious to know about the volunteer works in the spirits movement in the United States and is asking about if there is visitation to homes, hospitals and orphanages and if there is um, this type of service, uh, social promotion within the spiritual center in the United States. Um, well, yes and no, it's a little different. I would say we live in a different society with different um, certainly uh, different needs than our society um, in Brazil, for instance. However, um, yes, there is a number of centers who are engaged in this type of work. I kind of chose to answer this question because um, sometimes I think and I see, and it's just a perception, that a lot of spiritual centers here in the United States because we follow the models from Brazil, try to, to some extent, are highly concerned with this um, aspect of um, social promotion and as we have very strongly done in Brazil. And we have to realize that within our spiritual center here, the majority of the spiritual center um, are made by still Brazilians, whether our spiritual centers only speak English or not, still the majority is Brazilians who come um, from Brazil and who are in deep need of assistance. And so um, as important as it is to reach out to society, there is a society right there 
within our spiritual center who needs to be embraced, who feels homeless many times, who feels disengaged and lost. So whether your spiritual center has a structured type of work or not, we can always implement um, this type of consciousness that there are, it's not only the material needs that need to be attended, but the level of loneliness and desire to belong and to find a spiritual family is very deep. So we can be also and should be paying attention because we can reach outside of the spiritual center and in the meantime, people come in and go out without being seen many times and without being attended in their spiritual needs. So yes, we have it not in the same proportion due to the difference in our society right here. If you want to do a volunteer work, you cannot just walk into a hospital and say, I'm going to go into the rooms. I work in hospital. There's departments. You have to take courses. You have, there's a number of requirements. But it's possible in the number of centers who do. Here in Miami, we have Bicerra Jimenezes with the food pantry who uh, actually helps feeding many families. And Maggie Rodriguez is here. If anyone wants to contrib contribute to uh, the food pantry of Bizerra Jimenez, they're always, always asking for uh, some contributions. That's it. <coughs> Along those same lines, what is the best way to withdraw bad thoughts and be aware of ourselves? It's a perfect segue, I think, to what Aroldo was saying. First is to shine the light on them, to move them from the basement of our consciousness, as the spirit Joanna DeAngelis describes in the Self-Enlightenment book, which is a fantastic book for us to read in English, that deals with the search for understanding of our psyche. Um, but I love this question or comment because the word withdraw bad thoughts, not to <coughs> kill or stop them or whatever it is, because Oftentimes we just want things to go away. But to really make that so, as Arodo was saying, it's necessary for us to shed some light in it and understand why they are there in the first place. And then do what Kardec suggests. Replace a bad thought or an inclination with a good one. So first we must know, we want to know where they come from so we might understand, are they ours or they are not ours? What is the cause, regardless of where they come from, that if they're finding root in us, what is it that we need to work on? And then we can work on that. But even if we were to work just in that or just get them away, if we don't deal with the source of why they're taking root in us, another bad thought will come in and settle in there. So in developing good habits, it's not enough, Kardec tells us, to do away with the previous bad habit. But we must find a good one to take its place. And we also see that in a spiritual practice as well. It's not about just removing the spiritual influences. It's really making sure that there's no more way for spiritual influences to take hold on us, or another one will come and plug right in. So it's very important for us to do that. And being aware, it is the necessary and fundamental step. And what a beautiful step that is. It is again the prodigal son that I like so much from a psychic perspective because it is about our journey, not only physical but mental. If it has taken us so much time to develop these habits that are sometimes in our con conscious in our basement, it will take an equal, perhaps a little bit less amount of time, but it's still a very long one for us to develop the good thought processes back. So let's start today. I mean, it's going to happen. We're bound for happiness. So why delay it? Why don't we start today? If you have to do it, do it today. And then hopefully we'll be able to transform these not so great thoughts or inclination or habits because it might start as a thought, but it might develop into a habit. Aristotle tell, told us, we are what we habitually do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. So be excellent. Go out there, practice being excellent. And as a not so learned poet would say, and I added the poet piece. You know, be awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm not meant to be perfect just yet, but I could be awesome. 
right? Go out there and be awesome. <coughs> We're kind of in sync here. We should take the show on the road. <laughs> Uh, I have another great question here that kind of uh, feeds off this very same self-learning uh, process, which is a pretty powerful one. And the question goes, if there are no jumps on the evolution of the spirit, and also considering the, the, the sentence, you know, change your life, change, uh, change your mind, change your life, the question then is, how do we get to the process, process of the point of wanting to change? And... I wish I had a prescribed answer for you, but it's an individual process because our psyche is very complex and each one has different inheritance and um, experiences from before, from many lifetimes that it's really hard for, for anybody else to understand but you. So I want to piggyback on what Aroldo was saying, which is the need for reflection. Every healthy practice and study, basically, if you want to, can be somewhat combined to three different parts, which is the study of whatever it is that you want to do, the practice of what is, whatever it is that you're trying to do, and the reflection on how are you doing. So if you do a study, practice, and reflection, and you're always considering that in mind, it will become easier for you to arrive. The challenge, however, is what I already described, which is we don't often do enough reflection around ourselves. Partially because we have some psychological mechanisms also explained by Joanna DeAngelis in the book that I mentioned that prevent us from looking inside because we don't want to see what we know is there. We don't want to oftentimes find out what's really in there we kind of know. So we look away. It's easier for us to look into the physical world, the things that are palpable, than into the invisible and more emotional world. But it's needed nevertheless. And I'm reminded a, of a beautiful psalm, and I don't, don't remember what number it is, but it's a beautiful psalm that sp speaks a little bit to what Aroldo was saying with the need to stop. And it's really touched me when I first read it. I was actually taking a stroll out of the uh, Yogananda campus in Los Angeles, and they have different parts of different religions represented in the Christianity piece. There was a psalm there, and it said, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. That is a necessary step for us. We must be still. We must quiet the influence of our outward worldly thoughts. Come and withdraw to ourselves and know that God is supporting us and feeling that connection to the divine and then taking a non-judgmental look within ourselves and finding out why is it that I do not want to change. If I want to do this, but I'm not able to, what is bothering me? What is along my way? There's got to be an answer, right? Am I afraid of it? Am I just more comfortable the way it is? Do I just want to believe I want to change? I don't have an answer for you. But you will, if you are still and trust in God. But you must practice, study, and reflect. This is the shortest question I've ever gotten. It's one word, which is kind of cool, but kind of not. It says, autism? Question mark. And it is a great question, especially as we talk to he about health and illnesses and everything else. And I'm first reminded of the beauty and the clear and concise logic of uh, Kardec and also the good spirits when they are talking about causes and consequences in the spirits book. And they say something which is extremely obvious, but extremely learned and enlightened at the same time. And they say, every cause, every effect, sorry, is a, has a cause. And every cause comes necessarily before the effect. So search for the causes of all the effects, and you will find some answers. They go further. If the cause to the effect that you're looking at, I'm now paraphrasing, is not from this life, then it must necessarily be from a previous life because every cause precedes an effect. So autism, like many other conditions that we find here that sometimes come from birth, clearly don't have their cause in this life. They must necessarily have a cause in a previous life. And that's the beauty of spiritism, allowing us to expand our view of the world and the cosmos to see ourselves as the process of many lifetimes over and over again. 
That's very powerful because it changes the way we see things. And once we have the perspective, as Haroldo was saying, our look into the world, our cosmology of how we see the world and the things around us changes completely because when we take that road, and you can change autism for any other congenital diseases or so forth, you no longer see that person as a, oh, poor you. We see them as, wow, they are in the process of redemption. What a blessing that they are now in the machinations of their in improvement. Because that is a different task. And if we believe in God, which we do, I hope, we will also believe in His immense wisdom and justice and be reminded that He will never give us a task that is beyond our limits. And so we must also necessarily look at those who are challenged, whatever condition they might face, and say, these people are at least equal to that task. They have earned their spiritual stripes to be able to successfully navigate the challenges that they face. Inherently is it in them. And in that manner, they are winners. If we only have eyes to see and shift from our perspective of the material world that just sees things right now in the physical world to our perspective of the immortal spirit, and in fact, we should be in awe of them because they are doing something that maybe we will still have to do in the future, we just don't know. Maybe we just don't have the strength to go through just yet because it's also, God is also gracious and paces our challenges so that we never fail uh, on them if we absolutely don't choose to. So. What about autism? Causes previously from a causes obviously from a previous life. But we should never see illnesses as just debilitating mechanisms. We should look at them as redemption tools. Be them physical, be them moral, be them emotional. They truly are in a roundabout way, and it sounds hard to digest at first, but in a roundabout way, they are true complements to our divine essence that tells us that we can accomplish great things in God, connected to the divine source, fully realizing our immortal spirit. So I think that is a wish for all of us, to change our minds as to how we look at the world around us, to fundamentally skew our view and shift it from just the physical to primarily the spiritual, and everything else will be added by the mercy of God. And there's no better way or model to inspire us in that quest than our great teacher, philosopher, psychologist, friend, and coach, the Christ. And that's our hope, that we may also always search more, learn more, practice more, and reflect more. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Arlo.